Let's move on to AMD, Radeon, and NVIDIA GeForce GPU prices fall close to MSRP level, now only 25% more expensive with availability at its best since the market crash. AMD and Radeon, uh, AMD, Radeon, and NVIDIA GeForce GPUs prices are now just 25% above MSRP and are expected to return to normal by mid-2022. While availability is a non-issue now with store shelves stocked with GPUs and various options to select from. 25% more expensive still isn't ideal for graphics cards that launched back in 2020, but it's better than where we saw the prices hovering around a year back. From their peak at three times over MSRP to now falling to 1.25 times over MSRP, this is a huge improvement. Besides the continued improvement in prices, the graphics cards are mostly readily available in stock across the globe. The price fall is also having a negative effect, effect I'd say positive, on the scalping community. Individuals, retailers, and distributors who tried to hold on to their scalp cards bought at higher prices, expecting they could fetch a higher price later due to the huge crypto and gaming demand, but now have to sell them at much lower cost due to the price fall. As for now, major EU and UK retailers are seeing GPU prices price inflation up to 25% for both red and green teams, and this is actually happening much earlier than anticipated, another thing that its scalpers did not expect. Now, we had talked about this. We're seeing in Q2 of this year, which is now about to be in full-fledged, right, we are going to see the most manufacturing since Q2 of 2018. And that does mean we will have more stock. To compound on top of that, it is important to note for the cryptocurrency or from the cryptocurrency mining perspective, what's happening across the globe is increased energy costs, especially in the UK. So seeing the price reduction happen first in the UK is unsurprising because at this point, their cost for the power to mine on them is much lower. So retail GPUs will stay on the shelves longer in the UK because you're not going to have the same ROI that you would if you've locked in a good price for power in other regions. Now, the U.S. is also experiencing some of this too, but it depends on your geographical location within the U.S., i.e. Texas is going to have a lower power cost than California or New York, where it's nearly impossible. Of course, there are some cities and outliers like Plattsburgh in New York that do have low power costs due to their massive hydro plants, but they're also having a lot of issues with miners there anyways. And we've gone over that story last week, and I highly recommend watching the clip from it. And this is actually happening much earlier than anticipated, like they say. Let's move on. Most reports pointed out that supply shortages and pricing inflation would last throughout 2022, but now new reports seem to suggest that we are returning to MSRP levels by as early as May. In an interview with Tech Radar, UK retailer Box reports that they expect attractive pricing to return to the consumer graphics card segment in May, which is a month away considering we are at the tail end of March. This is from Tyler Davies at Tech Radar. He says, quote, I do expect GPU pricing to realign with where the market used to be. Given the boom in the market is now coming to an end. By the end of April, beginning of May, we should start seeing things return to a more attractive price. As for the prices shared by 3D Center, they are listed below. And you can see here we've gone down from March 6th at 141% to March 27th at 125%. And then you can start to see as far as Euro, right? UK pricing is starting to come down quite a bit. You can see the 6,500, let's see where the lowest ones are. Maybe down here somewhere. You have the 6,500 XT down to 219. You have the 6,600, still around 400 Euro, right? 500 euro for the 6600 XT, 750 euro for the 6700 XT, 1000 for the 6800, 1099 for the 6800 XT, and about 1350 for the 6900 XT. If we look at, of course, the Nvidia prices, it's kind of going to be the same story, still a little bit over, right? What the list price is going to be. You're looking at best prices here, maybe like 330 euro for the 3050. Uh, what do we got here? Maybe like 470 for the 3060. 
kind of goes on. Let's see, 3060, 630 maybe, somewhere around there for the 3060 Ti. Uh, around 729, 730 for the 3070. And it goes on. Does that mean the, the US is going to follow in this price? I don't necessarily think so because what we're starting to see is an increase in difficulty, an increase of price on the GPU mining market thanks to, of course, the recent pump. I think a lot of people may FOMO into mining, especially with the kind of, even though we have the impending doom of the merge for Ethereum, we still also have essentially other mineable coins that are starting to pump up and interest is kind of kicking off and people are like, hmm, maybe I can still make this work even myself, which we had talked about in a vlog last week, you know, definitely some of the anxiety surrounding GPU mining, some of the stress involved in it when we're looking at pricing and, and pricing of the GPUs and scaling it along with the pricing of the energy costs going up and the actual profit and revenue going down. So I don't know. I, I think that there are enough people, I know for a fact that like Founders Edition GPUs in the US are still very, very difficult to get your hands on and they are getting picked up by scalpers when they drop at Best Buy. That is still a thing that's happening. A lot of the third party cards are getting ignored now though. So there is a little light at the end of the tunnel there for GPU pricing. NVIDIA GeForce GPU prices are now mostly settled in between 25 to 35% with the RTX 3080 Ti being the most attractive option at just 7% above MSRP. That is, and, and that's, a little, uh, that's a little deceptive because at the time of the 3080 Ti release, they did release it at a higher MSP than you would have expected. And so just 7% above an already inflated MSRP cost doesn't, isn't really indicative of the market. I think you would actually see a drop from the 3080 Ti below MSRP and a readjustment of the MSRP to be on level with the rest of the series. That is followed by the 3090, which is 17% above MSRP. Unlike the 6500 XT, NVIDIA's most entry-level GPU, the RTX 3050 is slightly more inflated at 22% above MSRP, which is actually extra in interesting because their, their uh, performance in mining is not necessarily that great. So it's not a mining thing that's inflating that RTX 3050 price. We also recently reported on how the graphics card prices are coming down significantly and we expect even better rates in the coming months as the cryptocurrency market corrects. This is kind of funny as we see the cryptocurrency market not correct and actually go completely opposite of what all of us, I think at this point, we're really expecting. Uh, I was expecting a bear market. Honestly, I was expecting another cut of 50% of, of profitability. I was expecting it to really kick in right about now and it's going the opposite direction. Does that mean it's not going to correct and, and we're going to lose, you know, more and cut down 50% of the profits? No, it doesn't mean that it's not going to ultimately recorrect down there. But for now, definitely looks like it's going the opposite direction. We've broken a ton of resistances over the weekend and 50K is not out of the question for Bitcoin. Even hitting another all-time high of 60K or whatever, close to 70K, is not out of the realm of possibilities for Bitcoin at this point. And for Ethereum, it's really not out of the realm of possibilities to soar past 4,000 once again. So really, the possibility is there that this spikes all the way up once again. And then we have all this question surrounding like, is GPU mining going to go away after the merge? Are there any networks going to be able to handle this? And we are starting to see price discovery on multiple alternative GPU mining mineable coins from Flux to Ergo to Ethereum Classic and even Ravencoin. All of them are kind of spiking up enough to where you would maintain profitability on these. And there's enough of them that maybe everything's going to be okay. Does that mean for sure it's going to be? No, we could see essentially the merge happen. Everybody try to move over and tank all of these, these different altcoins. But in general, what we've seen in the past from GPU mining, what built Ethereum was GPU mining, because what it does is encourage participation within the network. Because if you have people invested into your currency with hardware, they're a lot less likely 
to go ahead and just dump all of their coin at a loss for, of course, their operations. And they are more likely to participate within the ecosystem while the prices are down to maybe increase their profitability through liquidity or buying NFTs or whatever it may be. So it's really, to me, it's up in the air from, the pers from that perspective, right? I think that it really will come down to seeing how GPU miners respond. And I think like if we respond in the way that we just start basically supporting other networks and participating within them, it will encourage the retail market to actually move over because they will see these price increases happening. I think the retail market has already started getting interested in Ergo, thanks to, of course, its kind of close relation with Cardano. We saw it, of course, with Ethereum Classic, and more and more people are starting to realize Web3 is definitely powered better through a hybrid kind of proof of work scheme. And I think Flux is going to be kind of at the forefront for that. Not to mention also, we saw a huge spike in Filecoin. Now we've talked about the problem with persistent storage in Web3, Filecoin is one that could in potential or potentially solve that uh, depending on, you know, how far along the network gets and so on. But it's definitely a better option to fix persistent storage with cryptocurrency from that perspective than just with hard drives than to just use hard drives as a bingo card for Chia as an example. So I think that's why you're starting to see the realization of these pieces that are needed to power all of Web3 and proof of work makes a lot of sense there. I hope you enjoyed this clip from the Crypto Mining Morning Show every Monday through Friday, 7.45 a.m. Pacific and 10.45 a.m. Eastern Time. You can check out more clips here or if you're interested in checking out the entire live show, you can check that out down here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next Tuesday.